It's the worst of the CBC for August 26, 2019, the show where I watch the CBC so you don't have to. Now, I'd like to give a big thank you to everyone for not rioting this weekend to protest my absence, as I did have to live my own life and do some very top secret, top secret code for super nerdy, but we're not going to get into that. So, the CBC welcomes me back with one of the more biased episodes I've seen. There were really four stories on the CBC covered. Three of them cover terribly. One of them actually good, but we're going to talk about each story poorly covered and then omissions of that specific story. So let's start with the one they're pushing um, the most right now. Wildfires in Brazil. All right. It's even right. They even had to talk about it. The G7, which is one of their other stories they covered. So we're, we're being told the wild, the, the Amazon's under, it's unprecedented. It's fires, right? It's Bonserio's fault. And I have two reasons why they're pushing this story. Okay. But let's look at the numbers. So the forest fires in the wild, uh, the forest fires in the Amazon this year, 39,601. Sounds gigantic. However, it is not record setting. If we're looking at just the last 20 years, right, the new millennium, the 21st century stats, the highest record year is 2005, 94,780. From 2002 to 2007, every one of those years had more forest fires than 2019. The only other one above 2019 is 2010. And for three of the last four years have actually been around the number we're seeing right now. Um, to be fair, now 2018 was only 22,000. It's a very low year last year. So you can, there's a, you can dishonestly say forest fires are up almost 80% this year. Um, except this year's actually average, and last year was incredibly low. So you will see some very dishonest statistical manipulation um, going on with these forest fires. Now, so this pro proves the old saying, if the news doesn't cover it, is it really happening? And this is a big problem. So I have two reasons why they're pushing it. One, forest fires are the new thing for the climate alarmists to be pushing. Um, there is a bad faith debate on all sides with climate going on right now where Every time it gets cold in the winter and it snows, um, some people will come out and say, see, look, it's snowing, therefore climate change isn't real. And the left and the media will say, there's a difference between weather and climate, you idiots, ha ha, you're stupid, go back to science class. Those same people, however, every time there's a hurricane, every time there's a forest fire, every time there's whatever, will get on and say, look, there's a fire, this is proof that there is climate change. Look, it's 35 degrees out today in June. It's proof that it's climate change, right? There was a heat wave in Europe in the summer. Proof that there's climate change. And then people on the right say, hey, there's a difference between climate and weather. You're stupid. Go back to science class, you idiots. Not, not great on both sides. Now, I'm try I think that forest fires are, are really the new thing they're trying to push as the climate alliance, and it's sort of the connection of, you know, because it's, we're trying to say it's getting too hot, fires are hot, this is an easy mental link for people to make. So I think every time there's a forest fire now, it will make the news, whereas it didn't used to make the news, which, is, which will make it seem like this is an unprecedented thing happening. Um, I think that's the new thing we're going to see over the coming years, is forest fire fetishes. Um, the other thing I reason is Bonserio is right wing. And as I said, they, when they cover the Hong Kong protests, the CPC, protests in CBC, never once have they said the word communism. However, when they cover the forest fires, they always call Bonserio's right wing government right wing. And they've been pushing, this is Bonserio's fault, it's his fault, it's his fault, he's not doing anything. They even pushed the conspiracy. Um, they brought on someone to say that because Bonserio said the Amazon's open for business, this was dog whistling, our new favorite term, for illegal forest clearers to go in, set fires, um, and then use it to create pastures and destroy the Amazon, right? Conspiratorial nonsense, um, but as we call it, uh, standard news. All right, so that was that story. Now, I'll get to the one that actually covered well. There was a fake hate crime in Winnipeg a couple months ago where a Jewish family who owned a cafe staged a hate crime and basically robbed themselves and put Nazi graffiti, and good. Good, we covered a fake hate crime because usually when fake hate crimes happen, the hate crime is pushed, right? The hijab hoax. Oh, an 11-year-old girl, her hijab was destroyed. Oh, no, it's the end of the world. Three days of 24-hour news. The prime minister makes a statement. The EU makes a statement. Everyone makes a statement. Oh, it turns out it's fake. Radio silence. So I'm really good. This story is being aired. We're showing that not we have to actually look critically at uh, alleged hate crimes. These hate crimes, the 2009 hate crimes, we are decreasing. Uh, the national reports are out. Hate crimes across the border are down. That's a good thing. But of course, that never makes it into the media. So hopefully these people go to jail. And for the record, to me, this looks more like insurance fraud than white supremacy, non um, hysteria. Um, so, you know, hopefully there's, there's a big punishment for doing this because we need to cut this out. 
Now, the omission here is there was a real hate crime committed against Jews in that we're not talking about uh, this weekend in Judea and Samara. A teenage girl was going hiking with her family and was killed in cold blood by a Palestinian terrorist. terrorist. 17-year-old girl was murdered, her father and brother critically injured. Um, there was widespread celebration of this throughout the Palestinian territories, and this terrorist who did this will be rewarded in uh, for life. Now, the, pal- the colloquial term for this is the Pay for Slay program. The official title of this program is the Martyrs Fund. The Palestinian Authority pays terrorists who kill Jews. And I bring this up to Canada because our Canadian tax dollars do subsidize this. Uh, they do, the Palestinian Authority, their economy is basically um, terrorism and begging for international money. We pay it to them. And a terrorist, this terrorist will receive four times the salary of a school teacher, courtesy of your tax dollars, the EU's tax dollars. Uh, Trump's actually cut funding to this because... Why not? All right. Now, let's get to the evil, evil Donald Trump. Donald Trump is bad and very, very bad and not progressive. And the G7 is happening. And Donald Trump is not not playing along. This is a progressive G7. Canada started it with it pushing gender equality and pushing, you know, climate change and the French have helped by pushing climate change and gender equality. And will Donald Trump be progressive? No, he probably won't talk about women's rights. So slagging Donald Trump for not being up on the women's rights. But who was invited to this G7? Iran. Yes, Iran. And they made Javed Zarif seem like an angel here. And they also managed to say, will Trump invite Putin to 2020's G20, G7? That might be evil. That may be a bad precedent. Let's just recap. So we're talking about women's rights. Um, In Iran, run under Sharia law, currently women are worth half in the legal system, right? So you need two witnesses to testify against someone in Sharia law. That means four women because women are half people, half the inheritance, half the legal status. A woman's life is worth a man's left testicle. No, that's not me joking. That's in the legal code. If I kill a woman in Iran, that is the equivalent sentence of me shooting off a man's left testicle. Seems like a very progressive thing. Oh, yeah, and they also just publicly executed a bunch of gays for being gay, the crime of being gay there. So you can see why people don't really trust all this progressive-leaning nonsense. Now, final story, Maxine Bernier's PPC. They put up billboards... Uh, they didn't put them up. Third parties put up billboards saying, no to mass migration, vote PPC. And there has been incredible moral panic on the CBC. The sky is falling. What is he doing? This is anti-immigrant, not anti-mass migration. Nothing about that. Now, two-thirds of Canadians think we need to reduce immigration levels. Two-thirds. Two-thirds think there's an immigration crisis. Now, good on Maxime Bernier. He's showing he's actually trying to win the election because instead of dismissing his base and siding with the radical left here, he said... We do agree there needs to be less mass migration. We're not anti-immigrant. And two-thirds of Canadians agree with this. Here's our policies. What happens when you take the side of the radical left instead of your base as a conservative party is your party will fracture and disappear. So when Andrew Scheer, hello, when Maxime Bernier got up and called out Igor Khalid and basically said to the MLK, you know, content of character is more important than color of skin, Andrew Scheer, instead of doing nothing, which would have been the right move because not, you know, you got to play the center, he came out and backed the radical left here said, oh, no, how dare Maxime Bernier not be in favor of, you know, Pakistani blasphemy laws? Ah!" And the party fractured because of this busy back the radical left. That was Andrew Scheer's fault because he should know better. Canada has a history of right-wing parties coming together and then fracturing because of things like this. They come together, then they get two centrists in the left wing, and then they fracture, and then they come back, and then they come together, fracture. When he backed the radical left, he took a hammer to his party and smacked it in two. He should have known better. And the PPC was created. And Maxime Bernier decided to not destroy his party by not backing the radical left. And instead of it, instead of backing the radical left, he attacked them. So good on Maxime Bernier for actually trying to win this election. So far, he's the only candidate with that strategy. We'll see how it plays out for him. But that is today's CBC. So all in all, today's CBC welcomes me back with a score of 10 out of 10 on the Rosemary Barton scale. Very impressive. Very biased. I will see you all tomorrow.